Hessian Lobo, Avenger of Shinjuku, Wolf King of Kurumpa, and Sif Cosplayer. But what about the Lobo of Fate Grand Order? How old does he compare to his historical and literary counterpart? And what grade would I give his depiction? Let's do this. Lobo is an Avenger class servant, and right from the start we need to talk about what makes up the servant Hessian Lobo. Like Moriarty and Nemo, Lobo is a phantom servant consisting of more than one identity. Unlike those two, however, there are actually three servants that make up Hessian Lobo. Lobo the Wolf King from Ernest Thompson Seton's Wild Animals I Have Known, the Headless Horseman from Washington Irving's The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, and the Invisible Man from the H.G. Wells novel of the same name. So how does this work? Well, Lobo is the dominant personality here, and he is very much an Avenger. The Headless Horseman rides atop of Lobo, and by himself would be a rider-class servant. As for the Invisible Man, what class he would be is uncertain. Perhaps Assassin? In any case, the Invisible Man aspect only really plays a role later on in the Shinjuku singularity. Otherwise, this is just Lobo and the Headless Horseman. This is digging into characterization a bit, but the story behind this is that during Shinjuku, Hessian Lobo was initially the Rider of Shinjuku, but became the Avenger of Shinjuku after the Invisible Man was added to his spirit origin. This normally would have further diluted the character, but due to the efforts of Lobo with Moriarty's encouragement, the Lobo part of the servant became even more pronounced, and so we got the change from Rider of Shinjuku to Avenger of Shinjuku. These class choices do work, and since Lobo is the dominant personality, the servant Hessian Lobo getting the Avenger class is a decent choice. Next up is his character design. The original Lobo is... a wolf. Specifically, a Mexican gray wolf, which lives mainly in Arizona, New Mexico, and northern Mexico. It is, sadly, the most endangered species of wolf in the entire world, though efforts to keep the wolves alive have seen notable progress in recent years. It is also the smallest of the gray wolves in North America, being between 4 and 5 feet in length, 1.21 to 1.52 meters, and weighing 50 to 80 pounds, 22 to 36 kilograms. Now, the Lobo in FGO is much bigger than that, as well as having a different color coat. Really, the FGO Lobo is more like a dire wolf, especially when you consider that you have the Headless Horseman riding him. One notable detail about Lobo's design, though, lay in his first and second ascension. There are chains around his legs, which is a reference to how he was shackled upon capture at the end of Seton's story about him. But once you get into the third ascension, those chains are gone and the Headless Horseman's sword is in Lobo's mouth, now fully embracing his Dark Souls cosplay. As for the Headless Horseman, there are a number of Headless Horseman legends out there, but it is clear that FGO decided to go for the American one. How do I know this? Well, aside from stating it outright in the Shinjuku story, they also tip you off by naming the servant Hessian Lobo. A Hessian is a term that was used for German mercenaries who fought on the side of the British during the American War of Independence, since about two-thirds of these mercenaries came from the German state of Hesse Kassel. Anyway, the story of Sleepy Hollow's Headless Horseman is that the titular horseman was one of these German mercenaries, but then got his head blown off by a cannonball. Those 18th century cannonballs, or round shot, were solid iron balls rather than bombs, and so hitting someone in the head could easily remove it. Anyway, the Headless Horseman is usually wearing dark clothes and a long cloak, which is very much what we get in FGO. Funnily enough, the Horseman didn't attack with a weapon, instead throwing his own head to take down Ichabod Crane. Sadly, we don't get this in-game, not even as an extra attack animation. Unfortunate. As for all of those spike blade things, I'll get into that later. Otherwise, the Horseman's appearance is quite good. As a whole, I'd say that the character design for Hessian Lobo is pretty cool from an artistic perspective, but it does veer away from the lore a fair bit. Even so, having the Headless Horseman ride a giant wolf is pretty cool. Moving into Lobo's skill set, his first skill is Fallen Demon, which grants increased star gather rate and defense for a turn. This is a generic sounding skill that, thus far, remains unique to Hessian Lobo. It is a skill that signifies a mystical beast whose origins are the result of interactions with humanity, rather than being some divinity. In other words, it distinguishes Lobo from beings like Asterios. This makes sense since Lobo's fame comes from Seton's book, enhancing the reputation of one wolf in the wild into a much scarier being. Lobo's second skill is Monstrous Strength, which increases his attack power for two turns. Now, my last video was on Jekyll and Hyde, and he also had this same skill, and even at the same rank of B. This is a generic skill, but I trust explaining this shouldn't really be necessary. I mean, it's a wolf so large that it has a man riding him. I think it's fair to say that Lobo has some serious strength at his disposal. 
Generic skill or not, this is a good choice. Lastly, Lobo's third skill is One Cloaked in Death, which decreases death resistance and attack for an enemy for a turn, as well as removing their buffs. Now this skill is what is behind all of those blade spike things that are in Lobo's design, which are also used heavily in his attacks. It is a manifestation of Lobo's desire for revenge, and how his rider, the Headless Horseman, has become little more than an accessory to that goal. The skill name refers to the horseman himself, but since Lobo is the dominant personality here, this skill has been co-opted to add to Lobo's offensive power. Hessian Lobo's noble phantasm is Frieren Schafrichter, or Freeze Executioner in German, something like that. Anyway, Lobo charges in, impales the target with all of those blade spikes, charges in to strike them with the sword in Lobo's mouth, and then the spikes shatter to damage that single enemy. The MP also applies Sure Hit to Lobo for a turn, three turns of increased critical strength, and a medium chance to inflict instant death. I'm unsure about the name, which I almost certainly butchered the pronunciation of, but it is in German, and the Headless Horseman from Sleepy Hollow was originally a German mercenary, so... yeah, let's just go with that. Now, this MP is supposed to be a combined assault by Lobo and the Hessian to behead a foe, but the animation complicates that a bit. Yes, the wolf does have that blade, and he does charge straight into the enemy, which would likely result in head removal. But the animation mostly features those spiky things. I still don't fully get what those are supposed to represent. Maybe it's just something the designer added in order to spice up the animation a bit, to have it be more than just a giant wolf charging straight in to behead someone, using that blade in his mouth. Or maybe I'm just dumb. Leave your thoughts in the comments about this. Uh, the spikes, not my idiocy. Um, anyway, moving on. Lobo's craft essence is Jenseits der Wildnis, or Beyond the Wilderness in German, featuring a wolf running in the wilds of what is likely meant to be the American Southwest, the area the Mexican Grey Wolf calls home. The wolf depicted in the image is uncertain, but it is probably Lobo's mate, Blanca. The text of the CE is seemingly being told from Lobo's perspective, as if he was talking to a master who had managed to get Lobo up to Bond 10, which you need in order to unlock it. The text speaks of his old wild homelands, about how those memories were set aside as Lobo was consumed by vengeance. But now, with the protagonist having stuck with Lobo in spite of his seething hatred of humanity, he allows himself to calm and remember his old homeland. It's actually quite heartwarming, and a neat reward for someone who managed to get Lobo all the way up to Bond 10. Maybe I'll get there someday. Moving into Lobo's characterization, there is actually a surprising amount here for a character whose dialogue consists of howls and growls. His biggest appearance in FGO thus far is in the Shinjuku Singularity, where he features as one of the major antagonists. He's less a villain, though, and more like a force of nature. His howls terrify everyone in the Singularity, who immediately run and hide from the menacing Wolf King. He is not just incredibly dangerous, but also stupidly fast. In story, Lobo is said to be running at 200 kilometers per hour. That's 124 miles per hour in freedom units. Anyway, you have to face Lobo no less than four times, though there is a long break in between the second and third encounters. When he does come back for that third encounter, however, he has gained the addition of the Invisible Man to his spirit origin. And the only thing scarier than a giant wolf that runs at the speed of a fast car is one that is also invisible. This is played up for all of its potential horror value, too, since we have a scene of random people in Shinjuku suddenly finding themselves getting eaten by the invisible wolf. Ultimately, by using Saber Alter's dog Caval II as a distraction due to its passing resemblance to Lobo's mate Blanca, you are finally able to trap and defeat him. He does still manage to escape thanks to the Headless Horseman dismounting and blocking you to allow Lobo to escape, but Lobo is fatally wounded and dies shortly afterwards. As for why the Hessian decided to protect Lobo at the end, one can only guess that it is due to them having formed a bond from being together. The Headless Horseman does not speak or get internal monologues, so you don't exactly get his input on this. But in the midst of these many encounters in Shinjuku, you do get a good glimpse into the nature of Hessian Lobo. Now, the Lobo that Seton tells of is a supremely cunning wolf who brushed aside any attempts to trap him with contempt. It was only after Lobo's mate Blanco was caught and killed that Lobo was subsequently caught, seeming to have lost the will to live after the death of his mate. The Lobo we get in FGO does show a few signs of sadness about the loss of Blanca, but this is overshadowed by his sheer hatred of humanity. It is noted in story that Lobo kills and eats humans out of hatred rather than hunger. Now, the real Lobo did not go after people, instead going for the traditional prey of Mexican gray wolves like deer or cattle. 
Lobo dreams of one day being able to live freely in the wild as he once did, but his hatred runs so deep that he starts forgetting about this during Shinjuku, losing himself amidst the carnage he is causing. Also, like in the original story, Lobo easily dodges every attempt to trap him. It is only by using Kaval II's resemblance to his mate that you are finally able to ensnare the Wolf King. Thankfully, things do improve for Lobo in Chaldea, as shown by his interlude. In this story, the protagonist is trying to bond with Lobo, but this is understandably difficult since Lobo is a wolf who hates humans. But because our protagonist is an all-loving hero, that doesn't stop them from trying to overcome these obstacles. You enlist the assistance of two servants that Lobo is able to tolerate, Nursery Rhyme and Enkidu, to try to get to better understand Lobo, ultimately succeeding in forming a connection with him. He may still hate humans, and actively avoids other servants, but Lobo decides to accept the protagonist and resolves to protect them. Now as for whether or not a wolf is able to have all of these various thoughts as depicted in FGO, Seton's writings about Lobo do give him a good amount of personality as well, so you can say that this much, at least, is consistent with the original material. And now for the verdict. What grade would I give Hessian Lobo's depiction in Fate Grand Order? Well, this is a tough one. His character design and skill set are passable, though plenty of creative license has been taken. Characterization is stronger, but again, some expansion of the original character has been made here. Really, that's at the center of Hessian Lobo's depiction. The developers took the original wolf character, plopped the headless horseman atop him, and added more to the Wolf King's personality based upon the idea that, finding himself in a second life, Lobo might have some serious issues with the humans who killed his mate. This makes sense logically, at least, but we have no idea how a wolf might feel about seeking revenge. At least, as far as I know. The end result of all of this is that assessing the accuracy of Hessian Lobo is more difficult than usual, because we are talking about a wolf rather than a human. There are clear cases where the developers decided to throw things in, like the weird blade things, changing the color of his fur, or making Lobo big enough to carry a rider. But when it comes to personality, there's just too much we don't know. And so for a final grade, I am going to give Hessian Lobo, the Wolf King of Kurumpa, a C-. I almost went with a D plus, but decided against it. Maybe it's because I like dogs, or maybe I'm just feeling nicer than usual today. Anyway, if you liked this video, please like and subscribe if you would like to see more videos like it. Until next time.